Hey there, fellow maker. We're doing something different today. You've got Bill here. We got Steve from SKS Props. And Steve and I are going shopping for paintbrushes because my paintbrushes are inadequate. <laughs> So we're going to go to a local craft store here. We're going to shop around, see what they have to offer, and hopefully Steve will be able to give us some good tips on which paints and paint brushes are really good for hand painting props. We'll see you there. All right, here we go. Let's see, uh, this should do it, I think. I mean, for $5, all set, right? No? <laughs> all right, lead the way to the real brushes. Okay, real quick, let's go over what you picked down. This is like 20 or 30 bucks worth of yeah, you brushes. Yeah, about 20, 20, 30 dollars worth of brushes. These, these are kind of the ones that I'd have in your tackle box of art supplies. Um, so we have a mop brush, we have a larger flat brush, a larger filbert brush, a smaller filbert brush, and a liner brush. And these will give you all different types of techniques that we'll go over later. Awesome. Cool, we'll take those back to the shop. Before we do, maybe we go check out some of those paints you like. So these are the Liquitex Heavy Body Paints that Steve has totally sold me on, and I'm running low on some, so I'm gonna grab some, but which ones do you think that you, you would absolutely need if you're kitting out your, your paint supply? In my personal opinion, if you're just getting a couple of them to go, I would always recommend a Mars Black. I have one of those. All right, I would always recommend a Raw Sienna. I don't have that. Okay, we need to get Raw Sienna. Um, if you're doing a lot of silvers, iridescent uh, rich silver is another one that I would highly recommend. Okay. So we got iridescent rich silver. Oh, I don't have that. I have the bright silver. Man, those are two totally different types of paints. All right, this is coming home with me. And we need to find a raw sienna. Raw sienna. Awesome. All right, let's go buy all our stuff. Remember, folks, to use your 40% off coupon. In fact, this one is free to the first person to use it. Go, go, go! These brushes and paints will be used to get effects like this. Steve, these are some really cool axes. What are they from? These are from my current creation, uh, Wasteland Alice, and this is a card guard from that series. So the card guards work for the Red Queen, and of course they have all these cobbled together metal and, you know, just, just really cool foam weapons, con safe, mm -hmm. but we can paint them to make them look like they're not foam. And these are painted entirely using acrylic paints. Correct. Awesome. And of course, if you are interested in the world that Steve is creating, check out the Wasteland Alice Kickstarter he's got going on right now. We'll have a link down in the description. Okay, let's get to painting. So this is an example piece of EVA foam that Steve carved some detail into and then hit it with a little bit of black spray paint as sort of a primer. So why don't we go over the brushes we picked up and uh, some of the techniques that you'd like to show us. Awesome. All right, to start off any of the paints that I like to do, um, I always start off with a wash. Okay. And when it comes to washes, primarily that's why I recommend Mars Black. Mars Black is a good base. Uh, having an acrylic down on top of the rattle can will allow all the other acrylic paints to adhere to it a lot better. It's gonna be a lot more durable. So to apply our wash, uh, we are going to be using a mop brush. And this one in particular, it wasn't super expensive. You know, it was only, you know, about 10 bucks. Uh, but if you take care of a brush like this, it will last you for years. Okay, so to start off, um, so we have our Liquitex Heavy Body Mars Black. And in this stage, you really wanna add a lot of water because you want this paint to get down into all these little nooks and crannies. So load the brush up with a lot of water and a lot of pigment, and you're honestly just gonna start scrubbing it in Again, first layer doesn't really matter too much if you get it all over the place. Um, this is usually where I'll go back in with a hair dryer and speed this layer up. Usually I do two of these uh, at least before I start adding the additional colors on top. Uh, for layer two, I'm not gonna add any additional water. I'm gonna use what's here, but I'm gonna add more pigment this time around. And what this is gonna do is start building up our base layer for the silvers and everything that'll go on top. With this type of a brush, it's not as much about actually 
brushing it on as scrubbing it on and making sure the paint gets down into all these little nooks and crannies. And then hair dryer again. Good. All right, so we're done with our first couple of layers here. Uh, we're gonna talk about brush maintenance oh, for yeah. a sec. Because with a brush like this, you do not wanna leave all that pigment down in there. So you wanna make sure that you really do a good job about wetting the brush and getting as much as you physically can out of there. All right, so once you've got almost all of the water out, um, one trick that I learned back in art school is actually hit it against your palm and all the brushes, you see that they all open up and that makes sure that all the water can evaporate out of there properly. We are now going to move on. This is our filbert brush. And um, a brush like this, if you notice the, the bristles themselves, they're not super soft like a watercolor brush, but they're not super tough like an oil paint brush. And we are going to use heavy body iridescent rich silver and that is different from iridescent bright silver so the rich is designed to cover bright is designed to add additional colors into it to give it kind of an iridescent kind of glow man these handles are just uh they're too long too long oh i can handle that hold on is that good there so to get a lot of these textures in here, uh, no, no brush strokes. So we're using the larger filbert brush and iridescent rich silver. Uh, big thing to remember, if you use any of the metallics from Liquitex Heavy Body, uh, add no water to it. And if you look, it's actually more of a scrubbing process than a brush on process because we want all these little uh, things that we've implemented into the foam to really stand out. Now, because this paint is pretty thick, the other thing that's really nice is if you're gonna use it, let's say this is the edge of our blade, you can use it as a highlight to start at the top and then drag down as well. All right, we got a decent base on there, uh, but we're gonna want some rust effects. Uh, one of my favorites is raw sienna. Now, when this comes out of the tube, it's, um, it's not very thick as far as paint goes. You can actually make it look crusty if you wanted some like really crazy rust pictures on there uh, by adding cinnamon mm, into it. Delicious. So again, with this, no water at all. Um, you actually wanna do a complete dry brush And don't do it all over, just pick certain spots that you want to make it look like the metal has started to rust out a little bit. Uh, from that point, I like to go and basically every time we use a hairdryer on there, it locks that layer in so you can do an additional layer on top of it. All right, so we have a rust and we don't want just the rust on top. We're going to go back with some of that rich silver with our filbert brush again. And you're not trying to cover all of it. You're just hitting highlights so that rust is still down there but you just got little glints of metal showing through. And again, no water added. Don't worry, Steve, I got this. All right, so one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back in with the silver with the smaller filbert brush just a little bit so that these, uh, these battle damage areas don't look quite so dramatic. I noticed too, Steve, on your ax here that there isn't just the silver. It looks like a little bit of blue was in there. Am I right? You are correct. Uh, yeah, I wanted the metal to have something more than just the uh, just the kind of gray going on. Well, let's see how it's done. 
All right, so remember for cover, we use the iridescent rich silver. We are now switching over to iridescent bright silver. And to do that, we're actually gonna switch back to one of the basic brands because we are not really needing the color as much as just to tint this silver. only hitting just certain spots so when this is out in the natural light and you have a photographer shooting that just these little highlights will be picked up boy that looks pretty nice hold on you covered all your brushes except for this little guy all right so the little liner brushes the whole top of it just came off. <laughs> Maybe spend more than two ninety nine on your liner brush. All right. Super glue. That's a lot of super glue. <laughs> Maybe wipe that off. There we go. So liner brushes are great for going back into all your little uh, battle damaged areas. And so once you're doing all of these dry brushing techniques, some of it gets back down in there. By going back with your liner, you can make sure that uh, you're not getting paint everywhere. You don't want to ruin this texture that you've got going on. Now, one trick with liners, though, add lots of water because you want the paint to flow down into the uh, into the deepest spots. Awesome. Good job, Steve. Let's clean our brushes. So how often should I clean the brushes or when should I clean them? I would recommend to clean your brushes after every color change. Um, and again, don't leave them down in the water because that's gonna ruin the bristles themselves. Who would do that? That's crazy. Mm. <laughs> so that's, again, I do that all the time. No longer, I won't do it anymore. Yep, get all the water out. Again, smack it against your palm. That'll open the bristles up and those will last you for years. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Steve, that was mighty helpful. We got this great set of brushes, including this big guy right here for I think $27 was the total. Like you said, these will last years if you take care of them. Exactly. Which I'm gonna start to do. And here is the uh, final product here. This took us like five minutes, or us, took Steve five minutes. <laughs> and this is the kind of results that you can get. And I'm very excited to give it a try myself. Steve, where can fine folks at home find you and your really cool new project? Well, I'd say the Kickstarter is actually going for a couple more days, so make sure to check that out. And you can find out everything you need to know about Wasteland Alice at sksprops.com. Perfect. Thanks so much, Steve. High five. All right, everybody. We'll see you in the next build.